Dullness in his head was always the result of this walk. Somehow he had sunken deep below the long spikes of blonde hair that formed a kind of fringe, yet still he felt as though the whole world was watching. Maybe, he thought, a desperate hope, maybe when I'm ten I shan't have to do this any more. But even his fuddled, naive understanding of responsibility told him that hitting double figures would be even greater reason for him to perform this task. It would only end when she was older. Looking at her, several metres behind him, a straight, brilliantly blonde hair flitting around her neck, the oversized lemon wellington boots loose above her ankles, under the weight of the full pack on her back, and with the sparkling colours of the plastic lunchbox wearily crashing into her thigh, it would have been hard to understand why he would resent this tiny thing plodding along the narrow, unmarked road. She was only six. Even to be walking behind her brother, dismissed and unwanted, was a treat, away from her parents, away from school. Her head was not filled with thoughts of why her brother looked so angry, or eventually so something she didn't yet know. Was it tired or sad? Was it poorly? Instead, her head was filled with fast-streaking grey and black lines under her flapping yellow boots that made her dizzy and sometimes stumble, forcing an unseen frown from her brother. And the big dark cars that rushed past, far too close, flashing in the sunshine, which were actually rather exciting, she thought. And her head was mostly filled with animals, ones she could see, like the solitary Morgan, hovering above them for most of the walk, and the ones she couldn't see, real and fantastical, secretly within the plants and trees along the road. His head was reaching that state of dullness. The initial anger of having to walk his sister to school was subsiding. He didn't have that adult capacity yet to retain that sharp bitterness, and so it withdrew, becoming a hollow displeasure, a blank resentment of his sister for her part in this. Occasionally, the sharp anger returned when the slap of her loose wellies grew too irritating, or particularly when she subconsciously her way through some enigmatic melody whipped up to score the daydream playing in her mind. Only once ever had he turned and yelled at her, one time when one of her little songs necessitated a change to accompany the flight of a baby rabbit, represented as it was in a bizarre series of yip yip yips and ah ah ahs. Stop it! Stop that awful singing! He shot at her, stopping and turning hard. She froze, only a metre away from him, her large blue eyes scared and searching for reason. What singing? She eventually stammered, unaware that the sounds were not only in her head. That singing, he shouted back. She shivered. La, 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 la. But I wasn't. She faded out as he turned around and stomped onwards. She had to run a little just to keep near him. It was hard to run in the boots, which slapped more than ever. He clenched his fingers, listening to the rapid slaps just behind him, and the teeny high voice starting and restarting her plea, always unfinished. But I wasn't! 